Hi everyone. This is the second video on tips, tricks and little hacks that I've learned with a vintage sewing machine. So these are just things that I've learned and, and I've researched about. Um, so I'm going to share what I know and hopefully this will, will help you. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is the pressure. Uh, so it's, this is the pressure knob on, on top of your machine and how to adjust that and um, the importance of the right pressure and also about uh, loading a bobbing and, and which way around the bobbing goes and, and how um, tension can affect your pressure as well. Now I would love to be able to um, slice open a sewing machine and show you how the pressure works but I can't so we have just a piece of fusible foam because it's thick enough and clear enough uh, to be able to demonstrate pressure. So if we pretend that my thumb is the feed dog and my finger is the presser foot. So when you adjust pressure, it starts to squeeze down on your fabric. If you've got no pressure on, say, say you took the pressure off completely, if there was no pressure on your fabric, your fabric is gonna slide about and when the feed dogs move it, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to be slippery and a mess. So we need to add enough pressure to hold the feed dogs, well, to grip, for the feed dogs to grip the fabric and for the presser foot to hold it down. When your needle goes down and makes the stitch, it's at the same time as making the stitch, your feed dogs drop. If I do like that, they start to drop, they come backwards a bit, and then they start to push. So what happened, well, obviously you know how that bit works. If there isn't enough pressure, it's not gonna do anything. So with some pressure, it will start to move your fabric. If you have too much pressure, this is too much pressure. Even with your needle going down into the fabric, there's too much pressure on the fabric and the feed dogs to get it to slide. So you can start getting problems with uh, the needle not making the right stitches or it just starts to create a nest because you've got so much pressure on there. So that's the basic principle of pressure is is to hold the fabric and to stop it moving about this way and you know obviously moving towards you you don't want that so you have to have sufficient amount of pressure so sufficient is such a wishy-washy it's not precise it's just a matter of finding what's right for you the right amount of pressure to hold the fabric in place and to feed it along uh, at a at an even comfortable amount if you had, let me fold it that way, a thin piece of fabric like silk, obviously you don't need as much pressure because as soon as you start putting pressure on thin fabric, that's gonna make quite a bit of difference and your feed dogs are gonna get jammed or with, with some fabrics, the feed dogs will actually dig into the fabric and start to bruise, dent, rip, um, because they're teeth, those feed dogs are teeth. So, with very thin and delicate fabrics, you need less pressure. So, let's say that that's cotton. So, you, with with compared to move it down a bit, a little bit of pressure for for very thin fabrics. But then, if I use the same amount of pressure, not much is going to happen. So, uh, or like on cotton. So, with um, your cotton type fabrics, you need a little bit more pressure. If you were sewing things like vinyl, denim, um, big canvas or tents or, or wood, obviously that's a lot more fabric, which means you are going to need more pressure on that. A little bit of pressure with lots of thick fabrics is going to do the same thing. So the, the thicker the fabric, the more pressure you need. So... 
unfortunately there's no easy answer to pressure it's just more of making the right adjustments for the fabric that you are using most of the time you won't even need to touch your pressure but if you are using the only, i suppose the only time you're going to touch you're going to play with your pressure is if you're using very very thin silks silks or i don't know what's thinner than silk curtain net no that's probably thicker i don't know what's thinner than silk um silky stuff so with with thin you're going to need a little bit of pressure and then when you get into your big mungo thick fabrics you're going to need more pressure to hold that fabric down so hopefully that that makes sense uh in terms of which way round the the actual knob turns um a bit like with with your screw your uh, screws with with um, screwing in, in a screw with a screwdriver righty tighty lefty loosey so with pressure it's quite similar turn it to the left is less pressure turn it to the right and you have right is mighty pressure okay left is less right is might that's how I remember it anyway so how does pressure affect your stitches so I have got because again I can't splice open my machine I am not technical like that so what I've done is got a needle it's actually a bent needle I bent it the other day and I've threaded it so that's the thread that I'm holding is what's around your tension disc so my fingers are my tension discs and that's the tail of the thread. So when you're, I really hope I can demonstrate this. So when your needle, let me do this properly. Let's step through it first, right. When your needle goes, oh, that looks horrible. Let me, I was practicing this and I made it look, hang on, bear with me a minute. Let me get this right. Mm, 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 okay. There's your thread tails coming out the back of the of your machine, bent needle, tension discs. Right. When your needle goes into the fabric, it goes down to its point, and then on its upward turn, it loops. Now obviously that would be under tension. So let's get rid of it shouldn't have two loops. That's just my It shouldn't have two loops. It's only one loop because that tension's up. But if I pull it, it's just going to mess up. So let's pretend that's one loop. <laughs> that's basically what happens. The needle goes in. On, when it starts pulling up, it creates a loop. Your hook then comes around, swipes that, and then creates a stitch. If you don't have enough pressure... So I'm going to pull that out. If you don't have enough pressure on your fabric... Bear in mind your fabric will move. What will actually happen is the needle, as it's pulling, will actually add to the flex of that fabric because that's not being held enough. So it's just going to go up and down and move. It will lift the fabric on a tiny, tiny scale. It will lift that fabric, which is then going to either contribute towards slip stitches or it just won't cause a stitch at all because on its down, on its pulley up when it pulls up it's also dragging on the fabric so you won't get good stitches like that so pressure helps to hold your fabric in place so that a nice neat stitch and the right loop loopage starts to happen now if i pull i hope that made sense so now I'll put that down because i don't want to stab myself Now we've got Mungo fabric. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to pick this up now. Okay. So, really need an extra couple of arms. Because look, I've now twisted my needle, which means I won't form a stitch or a loop or anything. Okay. 
So now we've got a lot of fabric to punch our needle through. Right. Again, same thing. If there is not enough pressure, A, first thing is A, that needle is going through all those layers of fabric to come through the other end. It might make a loop, or as you can see, that's not making much of a loop at all. And it's gonna start to, well, we start to recognize what that is, a little nest building. Because there's not enough pressure on this amount of fabric, and there's a resistance because it's got to go through four, for example, four thick layers. If you increase the pressure, the distance that needle is traveling through the fabric starts to uh, be a lot less, which gives the needle and the thread a chance. If I do that, I need an extra hand. I'm trying to squidge it. Because there's less resistance, there's then less resistance on your thread to create the loop, which is, you can just about see it there. So the wrong pressure will cause stitching problems. doesn't matter if your tension is perfect or anything like that. If you've got the wrong pressure on your fabric, it will start having problems with your looping. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it's, it's, just a bit of trial and error, a bit like doing, setting up your tension, but I am gonna go through tension. But I hope this is a good way of just understanding the importance of pressure and what the wrong type of pressure um, will create with your stitches. If you've got thick fabric and you have got too much pressure, even if your needle makes the stitch, when that comes back up, pull it, when that comes back up, you've got so much pressure on the feed dogs. Where's my feed dog? Feed dog. You've got so much pressure, the feed dog isn't going to pull, like, take that fabric forward. Which means when your needle comes down, it's going to just keep stitching in the same place. So pressure is important. It also depends on the type of fabric or how many layers of fabric you're doing. Um... Mainly that the only time, you, as I say, you're going to adjust your pressure is going to be with very thin fabric or with Mongo thick fabric. But I hope that explains or kind of demonstrates the whole needle thing. Put that there. Okay, the other thing I'm going to go through in this video is loading a bobbin. The next video I'll go through tension because that, that I'm going to need a bit more time with that. But let's talk about bobbins. And I've got... As I say, you might not even see the sewing machine this time in this video. What I'm going to do, first of all, let's tilt a bit. Let's talk about bobbins. Now, this is a 15k bobbin. And most of the time, unless, I mean, if you're one of these people that have got lots of machines, I've got lots of machines. I used to have to check the manual every single time to go, wait, which way around does this bobbin go? And then with my 99, which is there, that's a drop-in bobbin. So I'd have to get the manual out and go, which way around does that one go? Um, and the, the more machines you start to get, the more you're like, wait a minute, hang on, which way around is this one? And once you've loaded a few bobbins in your machine, you, you just start to remember, you remember it, or you just know, you don't have to check the manual. But then you go and use a different machine and go, wait, hang on, what? So this is how I started to work it out so that it doesn't matter what bobbin and what machine, I automatically know which way round they go. So I'm gonna do a little drawing. And then we're gonna Just have an imagination. Okay. Pretend we're on a road. The, and they say this is a slip road. The easiest way to come off the slip road and onto the side turning is to go like that. Nice and easy. 
because if you were coming from the other direction, you have to go up and then turn back on yourself. Now pretend this is thread, that this our little arrow here is thread. Bob in tension, just like your top tension, it needs tension when it's going round in your bobbin case or in a drop-in bobbin. The only way to do that is the angle of the thread. So if the thread is going into that slip road nice and easy, there's no tension. But it, if it has to go up and make the turn, it has to slow down and that turn and almost coming back on itself creates a level of tension. Just like with your top tension, your top tension is having to, so that's your machine. Let's do a fat machine. There's your thread. And your thread is going up. It's going back on itself around the tension disc and then it goes up and then it's hooking and it's, there's lots of the tension, the thread is going back on itself quite a bit. So your bobbin tension is doing the same. So now look at this. So this is a 15K. And I'm just going to drop my bobbin in. The thread has to go, obviously, in that little slit there. Let me take that out a bit. It has to go in that little slit there. My thread is coming towards me at the moment. So if I drop that in, the thread can quite easily drop in there, no resistance at all, because the thread is coming towards me anyway, so it goes meow, straight in. Well, we don't want that. We want it to go back in on itself. So if I turn it the other way around, so that the thread is coming away from me, now it has to go back on itself. Hang on. It now, if I drop that in, it has to go back on itself the thread is coming up and back on itself, just like our picture. So it doesn't matter what bobbin you've got or what, 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 what casing you've got. And I'm going to show, I'll show you on the, the drop in bobbin. I can look at that and go, right, which way around is the thread going to go? The thread's going to go back on itself there. So put the thread in so that it's driving away from the slip road. Good drive away and it has to turn back on itself. So, turn back on itself there. So if I now clip that in, so that that's not gonna go anywhere, it is going away from our little slot there, and not towards. So when I pull, this is a 15K bobbin, which means I have to put it in, when I pull the thread, it goes clockwise. So now let's have a look at the 99K. Now some of you have got a 99K, so you will know which way to put it in, but let me Ooh, drag it over. And let's hope that I can get a good angle. No, I haven't got the right angle for you, so. Let me go about there. Now I need a pointy thing. Okay, so I can look at this um, drop-in bobbin mechanism and there's my slot, which means the fabric's gonna go into that slot and go that way, which means straight away I know that my thread can't be coming this way, it has to be going around that way to be able to go backwards. So let's get, or is it the other way? Let's have a look. And this is the thing, if, if you know, you know, you kind of, you can look at any, any machine and do it. So I'm gonna put my thread in, I'm gonna sort of drop it in. So my thread is dropping around towards me. I'm pulling it and it's coming towards me. So I know by doing that, it's gonna go back on itself. If, get it out, 
I had it the other way around, that thread is without resistance, just slotting in there. If you've got a bob, you drop a bobbin in and there is no resistance and it slides straight in because it's going at the same angle. That is basically, where's my piece of paper? It's this. Oh, let me turn it the other way around because that's more like this picture. It's just slotting straight in, slotting straight in. We don't want that. We want it to go back on itself. So I know that is wrong. Take it out. As I say, I'm not looking at a manual or anything like that. It's the, the fact that a bottom bobbin requires tension as well as the top. So I'm pulling it this way, but I know I need to slot it at the top, which means it's gonna go back on itself. Now we've got tension on the bobbin. Now I know with the 99K, you then just slot it in there and then you just close up. So have a look at your machines. Don't look at the manual. Obviously you can look at the manual, but even if you don't look at the manual, you can look at any bobbin on any, any where the bobbin goes, any machine, go right, go in, basically go in the opposite direction. Have, create resistance in your bobbin, which means oh, if you can remember, or even if you draw it out, you don't want the easy route off the highway, the motorway. You wanna be able to create the U shape. You wanna, you're going across and back up on yourself. I hope that has helped. Um, the next video, I'm trying to explain that, it does, I know it does take a little while. Um, but the next video I'm gonna do, I am gonna talk through tension, which used to be an absolute nightmare for me. Um, but I've learned an easier way now to do it. So the next video, I'm gonna go through tension with you. But I hope that's helped with understanding pressure and understanding bobbins and which direction they go in.